This time we want to talk to you about a topic that is very important to us. It might be a bit offensive, it might even be brutal, but it has to be because you know we are probably the most offensive and aggressive space channel out there together with our friend the angry astronaut. We shall talk about the overkill amount of videos about Starship news and only about Starship, Starship, Starship. In non-Starship news, believe it or not, they do actually exist. The Artemis program is continuing to advance and we have a very important development between the US and Europe on that matter. Then we have the discovery of water at Clavio's crater on the moon. And we have a new nuclear thermal engine design from the company USNC Tech, which could cut travel time to Mars in half. Quite some interesting topics again, so stay tuned. So at Boca Chica, SN8 is this time really, like this time 100% certainly, like really, really certainly, 100% surely preparing for the final time. So these are really the ultra extremely final preparations for the 15 kilometer hop. It will do the hop very soon, promise. This time, really, we, we absolutely promise. Okay, this might have been a bit exaggerated, but what we mean is that every space channel keeps pumping out videos about how extremely imminent the 20 kilometer or now the 15 kilometer hop with Starship is going to be. And that this time, this is the final time, the final preparations and the hop is coming very soon, this time, certainly. And the reason is, of course, views. A video about Starship gets three to five times the views of a video that doesn't deal with Starship. This is a phenomenon that we have witnessed since quite a time now and every time we want to talk about a topic that doesn't have to do with Starship it gets like 10 times less views. It seems that there are many people who are really only interested in Starship and nothing else like only Starship but we don't understand how someone can be interested in Starship, but not in other spaceflight related technologies or in spaceflight in general. I mean, sure, Starship is of course the most important space vehicle of all time. That is clear. But let's be honest here. There's also a lot of other interesting stuff happening regarding human spaceflight. Sometimes we really don't understand how people can be interested only in Starship. We find this to be a highly fascinating phenomenon, which we don't understand. So in contrast to some other space channels that keep pumping out videos, that this time, really, really the 15 km hop is extremely imminent, like certainly tomorrow, we will this time do an episode without Starship. Please don't get us wrong, this is not a rant about other space channels. In fact, we think they are actually quite a lot better than us and we are just two total noobs compared to them. And it's certainly not only their fault because it's of course also the famous Elon time that keeps hitting us all. But the phenomenon that if you do a video about Starship, you get 5, sometimes even 10 times more views is real, dear viewers, you should be aware of it. So yes, therefore we decided this time to not talk about Starship and the 100th time preparations for the hop this time 100% real. Okay, rant over, but this is something we wanted to talk about, which we had to get off our chest because um, it we find it a bit disturbing. It's one of the downsides of being a space channel because basically you're being forced to talk about the same thing over and over again if you want to remain successful. And this is something we don't like so much. And since you know that we are always brutally honest, we wanted to talk to you about this phenomenon. So what do you think? Uh, should we only do videos about Starship? Is Starship really so much more interesting than, for example, developments with Artemis or the Chinese moon program or exoplanet discoveries to warrant 5 or even 10 times more views? Please let us know what you think about this in the comment section. And even though you probably hate us now, you might still want to consider subscribing to our channel because we are probably the only ones talking openly about even the most inconvenient topics. And as a subscriber of this channel, you will also get notified when we do a live stream again. And we will be talking about any space flight related topics you like during the live stream. Thank you very much for your support.
So now, for example, some non-Starship related stuff that we always find highly interesting is news on the Artemis Moon program. Now sure, the Artemis program is a NASA program, and therefore it certainly doesn't go forward as fast as Starship. But still, come on people, this is some freaking interesting stuff. We are talking about returning humans to the moon here. For the first time since 1972, and with Jim Bridenstine as NASA administrator, this time the chances are not even so bad. And now, a very important milestone has been achieved with the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the US and Europe on October 27th. The MOU will extend the existing intergovernmental agreement for the International Space Station to the Lunar Gateway. So basically the Lunar Gateway, which will circle the Moon starting with the first two modules in 2023 on a rectilinear halo orbit, will take over the role of the ISS. As the ISS will be retired at the end of the 2020s, all international collaboration will shift to activities in cis lunar space. This will include cooperation on science experiments, and of course, joint missions to the moon surface with a reusable moon lander. But Europe will also provide two modules to the lunar gateway, one being the habitation module IHAP, and a telecommunications and refueling element called ESPRIT. ASA will also build two additional service modules for the Orion spacecraft. This is a very nice development because international cooperation worked really well on the ISS, and we think it will work at least as well for exploration of the Moon. And in our preferred scenario, we hope to see an international Moon base being built on the Moon in the late 2020s, where the Artemis Base Camp will act as the seat of this ever-expanding Moon colony. And while on the topic of the Moon, NASA's Flying Infrared Observatory SOFIA, yes, NASA has a flying infrared telescope installed in a jumbo jet, has discovered water at Clavius Crater. Many of you sci-fi nerds especially will find that the name Clavius Crater sounds oddly familiar. And this is of course because the famous moon base from 2001 A Space Odyssey, where Dr. Haywood Floyd arrives in one of the coolest scenes in all of sci-fi cinema history, is built in Clavius Crater. How visionary of Arthur C. Clarke to choose Clavius as the site for the moon base as if he would have known that water ice would be discovered here over 50 years later. So maybe we will have our Clavius Moon Crater base after all. Ok, with a small delay of probably 60 or 70 years, but hey, better late than never. Thanks again Nixon for cancelling the Apollo program, really thanks a lot. That was our obligatory Nixon rant, we kind of, I don't know, we kind of have to do it every time we talk about uh, the Apollo program and not having a moon base, sorry. Anyways, the water is probably formed either by interactions of the solar wind with lunar regolith or delivered by meteorite impacts. This is really important because it would mean that we can build moon bases not only at Shackleton Crater and other surrounding craters at the lunar south pole, but that water ice may be present in other regions across the lunar surface, thus greatly increasing our choice of interesting sites where we could build moon bases. In other news, the Seattle-based company Ultrasafe Nuclear Technologies, short USNC Tech, has developed a new concept for a nuclear thermal propulsion engine. Nuclear thermal propulsion is in its core very simple, yet very effective. Instead of having two liquefied gases react in an explosive manner, where the exhaust is directed outwards of a nozzle, as is the case in a classic rocket engine, so for example SpaceX's Merlin or Raptor engine, or the SLS's RS-25 engine. Here, the principle is the following. You have nuclear material which generates a lot of heat due to radioactive decay. Then you have a reservoir of molecular hydrogen H2, which is heated up by this radioactive material, for example, enriched uranium. And we all know that the hotter a gas is, the higher the velocity of the particles of the gas. The particles thus get sped up with this heat 
to very high velocities and are then injected from the exhaust nozzle. The advantage of this design is that you get a higher specific impulse. Such an NTP engine has actually more than twice the specific impulse of a regular chemical rocket engine. The specific impulse, short ISP, is a measure of how efficiently a rocket fuel is converted into kinetic energy. The higher the number, the more efficient the rocket engine. The unit is seconds. An NTP engine has an ISP of up to 1000 seconds, whereas for example a vacuum reactor engine has 380 seconds. So this engine would be over twice as efficient as even the Raptor engine, which is already super efficient for a chemical rocket engine. NTPs could thus enable us to reach further destinations with the same amount of fuel or reach destinations faster with the same amount of fuel. A voyage to Mars, for example, could be cut down from six months to only three months with such an engine. That's why we sincerely hope to see SpaceX interplanetary ships use NTP engines at some point in the future. This is basically a Musk Hive. The new design from USNC Tech uses a fully ceramic micro-encapsulated fuel to power the engine's reactor. This fuel is based on high-assay, low-enriched uranium, which is derived from reprocessed civilian nuclear fuel and is enriched to between 5 and 20 percent, greater than that of civilian reactors and less than that of naval reactors. The fuel is then encapsulated into particles coated with zirconium carbide. This is a safer reactor design and provides a high thrust as well as specific impulse that could previously only be obtained with highly enriched uranium. More importantly, such fuel can be produced with current supply chains and manufacturing plants. Excellent stuff! So we really hope to see USNC Tech succeed and their engine design power our future flights to Mars. And if despite our epic rant in the beginning you are still only interested in the Moon Starship or Starship and nothing else, then you can watch this video here where we talked about an updated timeline for the Moon Starship. So thanks for watching this a bit weird episode of the GI Space Report and I would say ah, to the future. They will hate us. I know. <laughs> the zirconium carbide? With zirconium, zirconium, with zircon, 